vague prayers don't do anything for anyone. Right. You pray vague prayers, you're going to live unaware. Thank you for saying you're that. You're welcome. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you might like there that, There are baby. so many I vague think, prayers in the... I like that. Episode 17. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Lots happened. Is there a burning question? There is a burning question. Laura Hall would like to know, Lisa Bevere, how do you do ministry, especially if it involves travel or danger, perhaps both at wow. the same time? While is, also, are you making fun? Uh, is that, that true? That perhaps both at the same time was added. <laughs> travel or danger. I think it should say travel and or danger. While also meeting the needs of your family. And Laura Hall asked that question. She said thank that you, at the beginning. Oh. <laughs> she said, thank Laura. you, Laura. <laughs> Triple yes. mention now, Laura yeah. Hall. Laura Hall. We can Four. pronounce your That's, name, so we have We're going to keep saying her name. It. Yes. Our last episode, I couldn't pronounce that name. Yeah. I didn't want to butcher it. Yeah, you no. know, I, that, like people always butcher our name, right? You just say it with confidence, and the only yep. person who knows that you butchered it is the person whose name yep. is. Right. That's true. To, you just have to say it. John yeah. Beaver. <laughs> yeah. They say Beaver with such conviction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to the question, how do you do ministry when travel and danger and meeting the need of your family? Well, I am a big believer that the right thing in the wrong season is the wrong thing. Mm. So when my children were little, I did not leave for more than just Friday night. Mm -hmm. So I would fly out on Friday, come back on Saturday. Sometimes John would fly out Saturday, come back on Monday. Most time I flew out on yeah, Saturday. So, so we always had, I remember we always had boys night on Friday night. Yeah. Don't you remember? When you became more popular, you yeah. started traveling more. But <laughs> but but there there was that, we no, no, you had man night. I appreciate it. But there was that tension yeah. of you don't want to be negligent with your with your family to speak in an event. Mm -hmm. And and so as far as danger, <laughs> listen, anytime there's travel, there's danger nowadays. <laughs> but um, as someone who enjoys an element of danger, that was never a problem for me. But yeah, I, I feel like they have to say stewardship of your children is a higher priority than traveling right now. And a lot of people, they assume I was leaving a lot more than I did. Because I do think that even if I traveled three times a month, that only meant three nights away yeah. per month. Yeah. So mm. I don't know. I okay, think but I've, I've, got a, I've got to answer from my perspective because I traveled yeah. quite a bit when the kids were young. So from my That's, perspective- It just said Lisa answer. That's why I did it. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to answer. So- Both are valuable. Mm -hmm. my, Laura, it's a double answer. My concern was my kids were going to end up wayward, away from God. And the Lord spoke to me one day and he said, in your obedience to me, your children will be protection, hmm. protected. Mm -hmm. So I knew that, and it was, I mean, Lisa made the decision to stay home until they got into their high school years. I knew I had to travel. Mm -hmm. And yet, and both because of, of were a, obedience. because we are both obedient to God, mm -hmm. our children were protected. I really believe that. So that would be my answer. No. Yeah. Well, that's so, a good answer. Yeah, for them to know obedience what obedience protects. looks like in that season. So seeking out, yeah, seeking out the heart of God in that moment and trusting God to fill the holes on whatever side. Those and holes and, and that was back in the day when uh, you did Sunday morning through Wednesday night. Wow. So when I first started traveling, I'd go to one church yeah, so Sunday morning Saturday through Wednesday morning, night. Saturday night. No, I do Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And I come home Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And do laundry. usually leave yeah. Saturday again. Wow. So I, it, I was gone a lot. That is a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah, it was a whole lot. But that was that was I never did that, that was what we did back in those days. I mean, this is you this is speak this is anymore. almost forty. Well, it's thirty five years ago. That's what we did thirty five years ago. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah. yeah. So as crazy as that schedule was, and I remember one day one a friend of mine looked at me and he said, "John, I'm watching God do just as much by doing Sunday through Tuesday night." So I changed it and I started doing Sunday through Tuesday night. And it gave me Thursday and Friday with my family. But no, I look at our our sons, they're they're amazing. They love God with all their heart and they're they're just doing things better than Lisa and I did it. And yeah. so yeah. obedience is protection. Yeah. And you made it their obedience also. Yes. That which was, I think is I know really we've important. said that on mm -hmm. the podcast before mm -hmm. that you brought them into yeah. John would always come home this. and share what happened in yeah. the meetings. He did. 
they weren't really interested in the women's meeting. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> sure well, when we, we got a little older, we yeah. were interested yeah. in what was happening at the women's meeting. I do remember someone yeah. asking to come to a women's meeting. I was in Austin, <laughs> Texas one time. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm going to interrupt. That. I'm going to hijack this conversation. <laughs> we have something important to talk about here. Well, this, that, was this is oh really gosh, important. Laura, this was but, important. But I don't, I don't want, I want to take, question, I don't want to take away from the importance of where we're going because when you're seeking God. We're talking about Addison's new book. How? How do you seek God? What does that look like? What is God's word on travel? <laughs> wow. Are we really like doing this again? We, we I feel like y'all awkwardly throw it to me. We, you know what? No, it's Addison, I want you to talk to us because you, you wet my appetite on our last podcast when you said that the Lord's Prayer is not an outline. It's more of a It's not guideline. a formula. It's, it's not a, a formula. It's, it's not a, a formula. It's an outline. It's a framework. It's a framework. Framework. Yeah. Yeah. framework. It's not, it's not a formula. Please, I'm very it's excited framework. to hear right. about this. And, right. and everybody, this is the, the new book that just came out by Addison Bevere called Words with God. Subtitle. Trading boring empty prayer for real connection. Yes. Yeah. So that you just got everybody's connection with that there subtitle. It there it is. And I want to hear about this. So we have a lot of people ask us, how do we train our kids to pray? Like, How do we teach them to pray? How does prayer become a part of their lives? And I think one of the most important things that we teach our kids is that prayer extends beyond that, that motion of prayer as you're putting them down to bed at night or the motion of prayer around the dinner table. It extends into every part of their lives. We want to teach our kids to see God in the work of God, to live with a God consciousness that moves into their schools and their friend groups and their activities, whatever it is. Like That's what it is for us to mature and grow our kids in prayer. What's interesting to me is the the Lord's Prayer gives us all of that yeah. with the framework, yeah. not the formula, the framework right. of the Lord's Prayer. See, we've turned it into a formula, I think it's like 52 words that we pray, we kind of run through and then we move on to the next thing. But what Jesus gives us, which it really is a gift, what he gives us with the Lord's Prayer is an understanding of how the gospel works, mm. right? So Tertullian actually said that the entire gospel is summed up in the Lord's Prayer. So I I, wow. I wanna I wanna look at this and for those of you who've been praying it, maybe you grew up Catholic, maybe you, you grew up in um, a church experience where this prayer feels rote or it's synonymous with meaningless repetition. I, I just ask you to take a deep breath, take a step back, and look at it with fresh eyes because I think you're gonna see something different. Okay. So first of all, I want to point out that Jesus tells us to go into our room. Shut the door, right? Mm -hmm. So we're praying by ourselves in this scenario. But then how does he teach us to pray? Our father. Yeah. Not my father. So even though he says, hey, don't make or a show. Or not even your father. Not even your. Yeah. Yeah. He, he says, hey, don't make a show of your prayers. Yeah. Because that's the context here. It's like, yeah. hey, don't make a show. And at least in Matthew's got, um, telling of this, Matthew 6. It's don't make a show of this. Go into your room and pray our father. So it's not my father. Mm -hmm. I'm praying in the company of people. See, we make so much about the, the spiritual life. We make it about us individually, yeah. what I need to do, my cares, yeah. my concerns. And God is teaching us right from the beginning to enter his presence with an our orientation because it actually opens our eyes to the largeness of what's around us because so much of life and the meaning of life happens at the intersection of relationship. Very good. So right from the beginning, our Father mm -hmm. in heaven. Wait, wait can you, and you can yeah. just say right there, that mindset would stop the division. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our Father. And our selfish Father. Prayers. It answers it diversity. It creates, it creates inclusion. Space. <laughs> yes. It's 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 amazing. Mm -hmm. Our Father. Yeah. Not my father. Mm -hmm. Our Father. Which means we have to wrestle with going back to what we talked about last episode, we have to wrestle with this idea of God that's a God that's bigger than the projection of myself. Yeah. Like we have this tendency to create God in our own image yes. and then worship a God that really is just a reflection of what we like best about ourselves. Yeah. It's like, no, I need to, I need to wrestle with this idea of God and the beauty beyond of God me. and the plan of God beyond just me. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, we're <laughs> two one, words. we're two words into it. Our father, the significance of father in Greek yeah. and Aramaic, it actually begins with father. So our is a modifier that follows father, but, but the idea of father, like this is the orientation. Mm -hmm. This is the one who we pray to our father who is in the heavens. It's actually not heaven. 
It's heavens, which essentially is communicating. There's nowhere where you are not Lord. Hmm. There's he nowhere. He transcends all he realms. He transcends yeah. all realms, all dimensions, mm -hmm. all space. Mm -hmm. That's really what's being communicated here, right? There's so, a largeness in that. There yeah. is. There is. And there's a reason why this is where we start with our prayers. All right, let's continue. Hallowed be your name mm -hmm. or holy mm -hmm. be your name. So I love this right here in the first two lines, we have tender father and holy God right there. Mm. So when we pray, we have to bring both of those to the center of our prayer. Yeah. So, you know, in the original language, it actually means your name is to be kept holy. So which, which, okay. So going to that, if you study the idea of the name of God, which we don't have time to do this. I do write about this in the book though. But if you study the idea of the name of God and how that shapes our prayers, why we pray in the name. So the last chapter in the book is actually called The Name. Wow. Okay. So what does it mean to pray in the name? Well, this is the truth of God. God's name is an unfolding certainty. Mm. It's an unfolding certainty unfolds like we need to understand that there are layers there are dimensions to god's name Do you want to hear something amazing yep. he didn't reveal <laughs> yeah. himself he didn't reveal himself as yahweh to abraham he actually said to moses i didn't reveal my name to your fathers as i am now revealing it to you my name is i am yahweh so you, you want to know why he does that I, so i do write about this in the book Good. i'm not trying to like <laughs> plug but Moses says to him, Elohim, like he addresses him yes. as Elohim. Yes. And then he says, it translates like, what is your name? But what he's really asking is who are you or what substance are you? Like, what are you made of? So it's not, it's not the pronoun that we would use for name in Hebrew. It's actually describing like the essence of who he is. And he says, I am what I am, or I will be what I will be. And then we see all throughout the Old Testament, we see these different dimensions of, of Yahweh become real in the story, the unfolding certainty of his promise, of his covenant, of his goodness. Anyway, we're kind of getting sidetracked, but all of that, all of that is captured in the hallowed be your name. Wow. All of that. Okay, so two lines into it. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So we have a tendency when it comes to prayer to make whatever it is bigger than the good work that God is doing. Yeah. Mm. So your kingdom come, your will be done. It's a surrender. Not my kingdom, not my will, but your kingdom and your will. And we can pray that under the banner of the largeness and the beauty and the reach of who God is, but yeah. also the tenderness, tenderness and the eminence and the closeness that he is as father, right? So you're seeing how this all comes together. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, now give us this day our daily bread. This is, this is, this is a really, this is a really fun one. Hold on, what, you're gonna okay. say something? No, 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 go ahead. No, give us this day our daily bread. I think it's fascinating that we're instructed to ask for something as simple as bread. See, for them, bread was the utensil that they would use to eat the food. Like, I mean, we're talking about the most yeah, basic thing. It. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I wanna pause here and talk about asking because I feel like when it comes to training our kids to, to pray, like we shy away from asking God because we've seen this handled poorly. Mm -hmm. We've seen people like use the ask dimension of prayer to manipulate or God, manifest or manifest a new thing. Yeah. or it's like you know we 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 glorify the stuff you know whatever it is and like that's what we plot for like I asked for this and God did this and it's like and it's just it doesn't feel right but and I know for me like I grew up in next to some church camps that didn't do that well that put a lot of emphasis on the asking and I would say it the ask like and what they got received more glory than actually God in some of those moments. At least that's how I perceived it. And so I started to shy away from asking God for stuff mm -hmm. unless it was like super holy or for someone else. I was yeah. like, I, I, I shouldn't really bring this to God. And I noticed that my prayer life started to shrivel up mm -hmm. when I did that. And we had just moved into our first house at the time and we were house poor. And I really wanted to buy a lawnmower 
We had a tiny patch of grass. I really wanted to buy a lawnmower, uh, but we didn't even have a sofa. We didn't have window treatments. And so a lawnmower was, and we lived in Colorado at the time and you really don't, we, uh, I mean, you don't, you don't grass, need it. It was February. Dead. It yeah. was February. Like you don't, you don't really need it. And I remember I still went to Lowe's and I was just walking around looking at the lawnmowers, just being like, I want a lawnmower. I'm gonna mow like my these lawn. things are amazing. <laughs> I never adult. I never owned one before. And I just really wanted one. They were parading their power and their glory. And I was walking down the aisle. <laughs> That's what Lowe's does. And and out of out of nowhere, y'all, out of nowhere, I heard the Spirit of God say, Ask me for a lawnmower. And y'all, that's not me. Like y'all know me. Like I'm not. Like, who said that? <laughs> I'm not the kind of. I'm not the kind of person who like asks for things. Like I'm really bad at asking for things. There's certain things you've inherited from me. I'm and, sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I kind of wrestled with that. I was like, wait. And then finally, I asked. I said, okay. Like God, would you please give me a lawnmower? So I left Lowe's. Three days later, it was either two or three days later, I get a call from a friend who's moving across the country. He goes, hey. I didn't talk to this guy in over a year. He's like, hey, I'm moving across the country. Uh, I was going to sell my lawnmower on Craigslist. I've only used it two times. And I just felt like I was supposed to call you and offer it to you. Do you want my lawnmower? And I was like, wait, like, how much do you want to sell it to me for? And he's like, oh, no, no, I just want to give it to you. And in that moment, y'all, it became so real to me, so real to me that asking in prayer, even something as simple as daily bread or a lawnmower is an important part of the transition from the lofty, like what we've been talking about, God's kingdom, all that, and the material moving into our everyday lives. Like he wants to be involved with the daily bread. And that, that completely changed my life. And I, you know, James says that we have not because we ask not. And, and I, I think we also are unaware of what we have because we haven't learned to ask. Hmm. And what did Jesus say? What did the, the, you, no wait, what did Jesus yeah. say? Ask that my father might be glorified. Yes. Like we we yes. and let, about let me go one s- being glorified. Yes. We, let me, we ask yeah. the father is glorified. And wait, one more second. Yeah. Hold it. I'm so sorry. Oh, you could tell he's yeah, ready. He's ready. He's, and and I love how the book of Jeremiah says before we even ask, ask yeah. God has answered. But the truth is we can't recognize his answer when we don't ask. That's right. That so we then we ask. begin to acknowledge his involvement in every portion of our life. So the way I put it is we ask to become aware. Yeah. It's like when it's we beautiful. start asking, we start becoming aware of the providence and the goodness and the fact that he is the one who sustains us, even something as seemingly insignificant as bread at that time, like the daily bread was the basic. Mm-hmm. Does that does yeah. that make sense? And and I, I was talking with a friend about this. Even though we're promised in Psalms, yes, that those that fear the Lord will not lack any bread. Yes, He still says, "Ask." He yeah. says, "Involve me." So I yeah, want to go yeah. back to the most one that just rivets me in my thought life is the church that we don't ever want to be accused of in Revelations of being the the Laodicean church, Mm -hmm. the indifferent, lazy church. Mm -hmm. What was the thing that Jesus said to them? Ask and you say, "Oh, sorry, I need nothing." Nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, stop and think about that. Yeah, the curse of needing nothing. Yeah, curse of independence. Yeah, Mm -hmm. the curse of being independent Mm -hmm. and separated. I'm assuming everything I get, I should get because I'm entitled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. But yeah. then he says, God feeds ask- the sinners, he'll feed me. God clothes the sinners, he'll f- clothe me. I'm entitled. Well, yeah. instead yeah. of acknowledging my need, I, yeah. Lord, I Daily. need. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah. interesting yeah. how that transitions into the next line about forgiveness. Dad, what you're saying about that entitlement, I need nothing, actually sets us up where we don't extend forgiveness because we're not recognizing our need for forgiveness. Hmm. And that's and so that that thought actually extends into the next instruction. But I want to go back to this because I you hear this like, do I just pray God's will or do I go to God and I specifically ask for things? Like which one is it? And what I would tell people is look, vague prayers don't do anything for anyone. Right. You pray vague prayers, you're gonna live on a Thank you for saying you're that. welcome. Yeah. I thought I thought <laughs> you might like there that, are baby. So many I vague think, prayers in the like that. <laughs> and it's not that God can't do something with a vague prayer. Yeah. It's yeah. just you're gonna be unaware what he's doing yeah. with that vague prayer. Yeah. yeah. And again, going back to this idea of words with yeah. God, 
we want to open the conversation. We want to see how all the points are connecting in our lives. So we invite people into the conversation and we speak on behalf of God, right? So which is, which is a beautiful invitation that we're told we get to know his voice and we get to participate in the good news, the message of reconciliation that is being extended to the world in the most everyday mundane parts of our lives. But dad, I think you're going to like this mom. I think you're going to like this too. So I was, I, I was, re- well, we'll see. I was wrestling with this, this question, which is, it's a good question. Like, do we just pray like God, your will be done? Or do yeah. we go after specific items? And God took me to Jesus's most intense moment in prayer, mm. which is the moment in the, yeah, garden, the garden, right? And, and I, I noticed that there are three dimensions to Jesus's prayer. They all start with S, so they're easy to remember. And y'all, these are things that you want to teach your kids. And these are things you want to embody in your own prayer life. Three things. Number one, Jesus was specific. He was specific. Mm -hmm. He said, if there is another way, he wasn't like vague. He's like, if there's another way, please let, let it be that. Let this cup pass. Like, let me go another. He wasn't vague. He was specific. The second thing is he was steadfast. He prayed again and again and again. And again, he kept going back for hours. He was praying. He was contending to the point where blood was coming out of his pores, right? And the third S word, he was surrendered. Mm. He was surrendered. Not my will, but yours be done. Yeah. Mm. So a healthy prayer life, when it comes to asking, when it comes to going to the Father, requires us to be specific, steadfast, and surrendered. If we embody those that. three That's really good in Allison. our prayers, like if you if you teach your kids yeah. specific, steadfast, and surrender, and, and going back to what we shared in the last episode, the steadfastness prepares us to receive the request. It prepares the capacity for us to receive what we're asking for. And that's God's faithfulness in his goodness. And that's, that's just how he works. And, and some of y'all might be like, but I'm scared of asking for the wrong thing. Like, what if I am specific and it's wrong, right? Okay, we have this promise. It's here in in Matthew 6. It's in Luke 11. Um, If we ask for a a stone, but we think we're asking for bread, the Father's not going to give us a stone. Yeah. If we think we're asking for fish, but we're actually asking for a serpent, he's not going to give us the serpent. Like, he's going to give good things to us. And And what an amazing promise. and, And James says... If you don't receive, it's because you ask amiss. Yeah. yeah. Like God's like, don't worry. I won't yeah. get it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not. Well, and he said specific and surrendered. <laughs> yeah. So those yes. are couples. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's not specific or surrendered. So I hope, I hope y'all are seeing I as, love as you're teaching your kids to pray, mm-hmm. each one of these lines, you can personalize and customize for your kid and what they're navigating that day or what y'all are navigating as a family. Just don't, don't just run through these, like stop what I do when I'm using the Lord's prayer as a framework is I'll stop mm-hmm. and I'll pray into what does it mean for me today to contend for daily bread? Mm-hmm. Like, what does that look like for me, Addison today to contend for daily bread? And then moving on forgiveness, reconciliation. It's the heart of the gospel. I'm going to, I think we, yeah, we don't have a ton of time. No, left. no, take the time. It's because uh, all of that is dependent on this. It, it is. Yes. And, yeah. and, and I think, I think it's healthy for us to notice the sequence here too. Yes. Most people, when they start praying, where do they start? Me. No, just think about what they're praying for. What are they, when, when most people reach daily out bread. to God, so daily bread, trials, right? Like I need rescue. rescue. Yeah. yeah. Resource rescue. We start praying wisdom. Yeah. In the second half of the prayer, not the first half of the prayer. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And Jesus is teaching us, actually, if you, if you pray this, this right, mm-hmm. by the time you get to the point where yeah. you're navigating daily mm-hmm. bread, puts it in forgiveness context. and trials yeah. And, yeah. and temptation and evil, it, it's, it's now in perspective. Yeah. Which it, is it's even like you're bolstering your own spirit. Of yes. who God is. Yes. Like, yeah. Remember, this is who God is. Yes. Like, the big picture here to put everything else into context. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So forgive us, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And, and I want to focus on this next line because you do such a good job talking about forgiveness and reconciliation in the beta Satan. It's so, so good. And lead us not into temptation. Now, this is a line 
in the Lord's Prayer that messes with a lot of people mm. because they don't actually understand what Jesus is praying here, what he's teaching us to pray. And there's a couple things I want to call it. Number one, temptation and trial, an exact same Greek word. So you can translate it either way. We could, this could be lead us not into trial. Okay. Just, just to be clear, but the Greek word here in two is, is the important Greek word for us to pay attention to. What it conveys is that the temptation or the trial is not our final destination. Hmm. Oh, I see. So when he's sent, teaching us, yeah. lead us not into temptation, what he's teaching us to pray and declare. Don't it's leave like, me there. It's like a, yeah. it's a declaration because y'all, yeah. we're going to go through temptations yeah. and trials. You just this is keep not, through. this is not, yeah. hey, help me avoid temptations and trials and God's get faithfulness looks like me avoiding it. It's actually a declaration that God will take us through, through the temptation and trial and the temptation or trial will not be the final destination, Yeah, yeah. which I just, I love. I love that. I love that promise, the faithfulness and the goodness of God that he will take us through. And because of that, because we know that is the case, we can pray, but deliver us from evil. And so 52 words or whatever it is, very short. But if if y'all use that mm -hmm. with your children, teaching them how to pray, this prayer gives them so, so much good. insight into the character of God mm -hmm. and into how we're supposed to engage with each other, how we're supposed to navigate hardship and trial and concern and temptation that we face and whatever season we're in. And that's where we are formed. It's like in Mark 4 in the parable of the sower, the sun rises for the sake of the seed. Like, yes, it will scorch some of the seeds, but it rises for the sake of of the seed. The yeah. seed doesn't grow without the sun rising, right? right? Like that is, that's the trial. The trial is the sun rising. Like it's hot. It's intense. There's, there's, you know, there's heat. That's a part of life. Refinement. It's refining. And, and when we understand like, this is how we're to make sense of our lives and prayer, it opens up every part of our life. I love this. Well, Addison, I think everybody wants to get to hold this book that's listening to us. So tell us how to get it. Yeah, I mean, it's available really wherever people get their books. Books. Um, audiobook, ebook, uh, physical book. And then the Spanish book actually is out too. It came out April 18th. So the book came out April 18th, 2023. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. they can go, is there addisonbevere.com or is it messengerinternational.com? Uh, they, they can go to Amazon to get the book, but if they want to learn more about what we're talking about, they can go to wordswithgod.org too. Okay, good. Yeah, wordswithgod.org. So you've given people all kinds of options Resources. to be able to go and get it. But the big yes. thing is get it yeah. and read it. Yeah. And so um, Addison, thank you for sharing with us. And I believe if parents teach their children this, I, you know, with the, with the depth of clarity and the you 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 created hunger in all of us mm -hmm. you know that that's what i looked for is as you shared you created hunger in me to even tune up in uh, areas that i i i see in me that have become weak in my prayer life wow. so wow i i believe this book is going to help people to do that wow. so and i just want to I'm say proud something of you. to Thank the you. parents out there i'm just going to challenge you to replay this podcast around your kitchen table mm -hmm. yeah. and talk to your children about what does that look like the specific the steadfast and the surrendered yeah. and ask them what are you wrestling with right now and just go around the table and yeah. take those things to prayer and i'm so excited that you have written this book mm. because i believe this book is a tool and i believe that parents need it in their hands but these need to be conversations around the table and so we're just so honored that you would invite us into your home and listen to at home wow. with the Beviers. and thank you for sharing words with god thank you so kind dad do you want to pray us out yes Heavenly Father, our Father in heaven, we're so grateful for what you've given to us through your servant. Yes, God. And Lord God, I just ask that as people read this book, that their prayer life will, Lord, go to a place of richness yes, and fulfillment. And Father, we just thank you so very much for the families, the people that are listening right now. We just pray your will into their life. We speak your will of provision, of protection, of security and safety into their lives. And may your presence manifest upon their family, upon on their lives in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us again at Home with the Beveers, where we are so passionate about helping you create a legacy starting at home. If you haven't already, go right ahead and like and subscribe. And guys, as well, leave us a comment below, because whenever you leave a comment, it helps us curate content that can help so many other people. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining, and we'll see you next time at Home with the Beveers. Thank you.